Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to create this everyday natural looking makeup look that I use for pretty much every occasion, from filming videos to going to prom. Step one is for me to prepare my skin so that I have a nice base for me to work off of for the rest of the look. To start off with, I'm using my sunscreen as my quote unquote primer to protect my skin from sun damage and create a glowy base. In my opinion, regularly taking care of your skin is the best way to have nice looking healthy skin, not some sort of five minute miracle fix that you can do right before you try to put on makeup. I do acknowledge that I am very lucky genetically such that I am not predisposed to have much acne, but nevertheless, hopefully my opinion is still valid. If you'd like to learn more about my skincare routine, I will link a video about that in the cards and description. Now that I'm done really thoroughly rubbing in my sunscreen, I'm going to move on to my face makeup. And my first step is to conceal the dark circles under my eyes using a stick foundation. To use this as a concealer, I rub a little bit off on my ring finger and then use that finger to apply it directly onto my under eyes and face. I prefer using this stick foundation, which has medium coverage and is quite creamy and not very matte. It's almost exactly my skin tone, just a little bit lighter for a bit of a brightening effect, but not too light. I find that since I don't wear foundation, this looks much more natural than a full coverage or matte foundation. As you can see in the video clip, the way I'm putting this on is by using gentle patting motions underneath my eye using my ring finger, since that's the weakest and therefore gentlest fingers. The skin underneath your eye is very delicate, so don't pull really hard, otherwise you risk damaging the skin and causing premature wrinkling. Also, I recommend using the bare minimum amount of product that you need to cover up what you want to cover up because the more you layer on, the less natural it'll tend to look. And of course, looking unnatural is a no-go. You want to convince everyone that you really don't have dark circles. You know, you definitely slept those full eight hours every single night. Anyways, I'm using the same stick foundation and patting and blending methods to cover up any redness or acne scarring on my face. As I previously mentioned, I have those lucky anti-acne genetics, so I'm just covering up a bit of redness around my nose and acne scarring in between my eyebrows. Next, I'm going to set everything down with a quote-unquote translucent setting powder, although if you're anything darker than I am, it's not going to be actually transparent. Use a darker setting powder. I'm going to use this fluffy brush as well, and make sure you tap off any excess product so you don't end up with a crap ton of powder underneath your eyes, because trust me, it makes your eyes very dry, especially if you're wearing contacts. I'm only going to be putting down powder in the spots where I put on that stick foundation. Since my skin tends to be pretty dry in those spots where I did not add concealer, adding more powder just tends to create a dry texture while being unnecessary for the longevity of the product underneath, because there is no product underneath. Next, I'm going to use some cream highlighter to make myself look even more glowy and dewy or sweaty, depending on how you look at it. To apply it, I just use the stick directly on the spots where I want it. The general rule of thumb is that you want to highlight places that you want to draw more attention to or make look bigger. So for me, that includes the top of my forehead and my nose because in my opinion, they're proportionally a bit small compared to what is supposed to be. Although like we don't have to subscribe to societal beauty standards of what we're supposed to look like, but you know, I just want to highlight those things and also make myself look really shiny. I'm also going to highlight my cheekbones because that's just where you're supposed to highlight, right? Back to some more technique tips. The method I use is after drawing everything on with a stick, I'll use another finger, not the same one that I used for the stick foundation, to blend out the edges such that it doesn't look like a harsh stripe of product. I blend out using a combination of patting outwards motions and just dragging it around, similar to what you saw in my blending out my concealer section of this video along with what you can see on screen right now. My next step is going to be to layer blush on top of this highlight. I personally prefer a peachy blush for my skin tone, and I'm going to apply it with this pretty large fluffy stippling brush. Honestly, this brush is way too big for my face, so let me know if you have recommendations for a smaller brush. To apply this, I start by stamping it on directly underneath where my concealer was at the highest point of the apples of my cheeks. The first spot that you put down your brush will be when it has the most pigment, and therefore that part will be the darkest and have the most oomph to that color. Then with some up and down stamping blotting motions, I'm blending it up outwards towards my cheekbones and then back inwards towards my nose and just back and forth until it seems like all of the product has come off of the brush. I'm doing that again on the other side. Sometimes I realize that I've gone way too hard on one side, so I'll flip back and forth and try to make them even in depth and color. And now we move on to eye makeup and I'm going to start off by filling in my eyebrows using this fluffy liner brush and a dark brown eyeshadow that's not too warm and not too cool toned. Of course, the color you use will depend on the color of your brows. And when you dip into that eyeshadow, don't scrape out too much product, otherwise it'll look like you're carving out your eyebrows with a Sharpie, which is not really the look we're going for. I'm cutting a bit in and out because my camera did not want to focus on my brows during this one part. 
I already have quite a bit of brow hair, so I'm just following the shape of my brows where they already are and filling them in in spots where they might be patchier and overall just adding a bit more depth so that they're a bit more punchy, you know what I mean? Although I recommend starting with a light hand and slight feathering motions so that you don't make it too dark all at once in one spot, once again creating that horrible block sharpie brow effect that isn't necessarily the look I'm going for. Once again, I'm looking for that natural, I totally slept for eight hours look. Since as I previously mentioned, and you've probably observed, I have a lot of eyebrow hair and I want to keep it all in place since these buddies can be a kind of unruly bushy mess at times, so I'm going to use a clear brow gel for that. The way I do this is I start with some quick fluffing upwards motions with that spoolie brush. I start on the inside of my arch and then I work my way outwards for the tail. While at the beginning of my arch, my brushing motions are pretty much straight vertically upwards. As I work my way outwards, they become flatter and flatter until they're pretty much parallel to the ground. Sometimes a clear brow gel will leave white flakes in my very black eyebrows, so I'll use a spoolie to comb those through. Next, I'm going to dip this fluffy blending brush into my blush that I previously used to use that as an eyeshadow. For this multi-purpose, dual-purpose reason, I recommend you use either a matte blush or a blush that comes with a matte and shimmer side like the one that I was using. Now here's an explanation of the eyeshadow application. Using that fluffy blending brush, blend the blush out in the outer third of your eye. Pretty much any spot that is white outside of your cornea or iris, is that what it's called? It's the iris. The blending motions I'm using are first some padding to set down that product in place, and then I'm blending the edges out horizontally by using some side to side sweeping motions and blending the edges upward using circular small strokes. I'm having the blush do double duty as eyeshadow in this look because I find that the monochromatic look of matching your eyeshadow and blush as the same color really ties everything together and it helps to do multi-purpose because then you don't have to worry about buying more products. Of course, if you wanted, you could use the eyeshadow color of your choice in this step instead of the blush. In my next step, I'm going to be doing some more multi-purpose reusing with that cream highlighter. I'm taking some of that on my pointer finger. And then I'm going to pat that on the center of my eyelid and the inner area of my eyelid. First, starting by concentrating it in the center by patting it down, and then I continue with those patting motions to blend it outwards and towards the inner corner of my eye. And to explain, the inner corner of your eyelid is right above where your tear ducts are, while I would define the center of your eyelid as approximately above the cornea when you're looking straight ahead. The eye portion of this look is really about multitasking products, as I'm going to use that same shade I used to fill in my brows to line my eyes. You don't necessarily have to use an eyeshadow shade either, you could use something like a brow powder or just any colored powder that matches your eyebrow shade. Using that same somewhat fluffy liner brush that I used to fill in my eyebrows, I'm adding a soft wing to my eyelids. I do this by first tracing my natural lash line in the area basically from where my cornea starts on the inner side and outwards, and then I do just barely like half a centimeter, maybe a couple millimeters worth of a soft wing upwards. The goal is for it to look very natural and diffused rather than a sharp cat eye line that people tend to do with liquid liners because once again that's not really the look I prefer, although you do you if that's what you like. I did kind of mess up here and you could see that I had to smudge away some of that excess product with my finger so that it didn't look so Egyptian hieroglyphic-y, you know what I mean? Like it kind of looked like that symbol for the eye of Ra. As you can see from the amount of time I spent going back and forth and messing up, it's really an imperfect process that I really haven't mastered, which is probably why I haven't taken to doing a sharper cat eye wing with black liquid liner. But it's just a lot of tracing and then retracing and then darkening it and then blending it out and then trying to darken it again and just going back and forth over and over until it's good enough, but never perfect. One thing that I didn't quite catch on camera due to my poor ability to look at the viewfinder while also doing my own eye makeup, I also added a tiny amount of that darker eyeshadow color on the outside corner of my bottom lash line. This extra like five millimeters of added darkness on the outside corners really just helps draw the eye outwards and makes them look bigger and more open in my opinion. Next, I'm going to curl my lashes with this terrifying looking death contraption known as a lash curler. It usually takes me a couple tries to get it quite right and capture all of my lashes in those. I have a really stick straight Asian lashes that just point straight downwards. So I really like to use a lash curler before I put on mascara in order to get them to actually have that curl to them rather than just continuing to point straight downwards, but now longer. 
The method I use to put on mascara is I start with one thin layer that covers pretty much my entire lash, brushing upwards and focusing on lengthening those lashes because they're pretty darn short. And then after that, I put on another layer that's more concentrated towards the base of my lashes to add volume to the part that is closer to where my eyeball is and not the part that's really far away from my eyeball because I feel like that just looks more like actual lash hairs which are darker towards the area that's close to your eyelid and then get wispier as they move away from your face. My last tip is that I generally use a waterproof mascara because I find that underneath my Asian monolids, anything else tends to smudge a lot. Now that I'm done with my eye look, my last step is to add a lip product and for that I'm going to use a lip gloss that is very close in color to the blush that I used for my face and eyes such that it really ties together that whole monochromatic peachy look. Generally, I prefer lip gloss over a regular lipstick just because I find it more comfortable and more forgiving in its application. You don't really have to be that precise, especially when the color is quite close to your natural lip color like this one is. And of course, I can't resist anything that will make me look shinier than I already am because I'm really going for that shiny Pokemon look, you know, because they're the strongest ones, of course. So anyways, here is my finished look. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I do post new videos every Monday, although they generally are not much at all like this. I usually post about studying and bullet journaling. I also post photos of my notes and bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time.